What's going on, guys? I'm Taylor. Hey, it's your boy Dre. Welcome back to DC Time. DC Time. DC My time, time, your time, our time, DC Time. We were talking about the the I actually kind of like this episode, so we're talking about our my okay favorite show and Did Taylor's you fall favorite show. No, I didn't fall asleep this time. Okay, um, I think it's we're a, talking it's about the, Doom Patrol. Falling asleep is a level for Dre <laughs> on what whether he likes or doesn't like an episode <laughs> no. of a show. You know, oddly enough, there are some things I fall asleep because of the vibe that I still like. It was an ASMR show, apparently. <laughs> and Dre's all <laughs> yeah, on just that. that relaxing. Um, one of them being uh, World of Tomorrow and Captain Yesterday, whatever the show is called, with uh, Angelina Jolie. But anyway, yeah. Doom Patrol, Therapy Patrol, we're talking about. Basically, it's kind of like a follow-up to last episode-ish. Can uh, I say one thing? I really like these types of episodes or shows, like shows or movies where this happens like more of like tells eight different stories in one how they more of like it's not like simpsons like 22 22 sto- short stories type thing but it's going to be like uh i'm not i always use the the phrase tarantino-esque but it's not really tar- tar- tarantino-esque because they do a, and they a, do a, and don't a better I'm, example I'm not, I'm not sure how what phrase you'd use to describe this type of storytelling or movie or show making you know what i mean yeah like we're all like there's these different events and they happen in different locations yeah like there, there's one bi- there's one main event but there's also side stories that happen around it that are that are it's affected like by that. this and, and you you there's, acknowledge that there's something else to, it's more one story but how each one experience it so the it the story from different perspectives yeah uh it's like the crime happened so what were you doing when this crime happened so like yeah like there was a gunshot like each story will hear the gunshot somewhere but you acknowledge that the main thing happen or a main plot point happen, but just what you were doing. You were like, and like you're and like in the very beginning, you're already given the beginning, middle and end from one perspective. But then you're like, wait, wait, what happened and how the other saw it? And yeah, it kind of comes together and then you see it. Um, I thought it was actually done pretty well up until the ending. Okay. I <laughs> hated yeah, the yeah, ending of this episode. That was like, it was like, if you had made like a masterpiece and like, Right when you got to like ninety percent done, like okay, I'm just gonna draw a silly cartoon. You just erased, you just <laughs> <Yeah>. erased it. <laughs> it was like waka waka waka. I was like, wait, you did so well <laughs> up to this point. Why did you just like you just had to finish it out like the way you had the thing? You put a sticker over it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, it was like okay, cool. No, let's just throw paint on it. It's like what? You, you got so far? I'm like yeah, but I wanted to keep it lighthearted. Like no, you were doing good. Anyway, that's how I felt about this episode. It started off really great, and it, it, it really managed to dive deep into each person. Every character, all the drama of each individual character, and they're like their own little way. They gave it from like their, it went from every character's past to their present and in their mindset and their mind frame. And it did that really well. Um, yeah. The major one being Cliff. Yes. Uh, like it really delved deep into his psyche, what's going on. Uh, and, and it actually brought up a good point that, you know, he's a robot now and he was trying to like cry, but he can't cry. He can't yeah. eat. He can't do nothing. So it's like, but when you want to cry, what do, what do you? How would how do you express that? How the brain works, and and it it appeared that <laughs> that that was making him basically malfunction because that that program or algorithm or however you want to say it, uh, function is not built in, so the mind doesn't understand that. So it, it was really kind of deep, and, then, and up until it got to the end, <laughs> and it's like. But oh. but that also brought back a a a character, as you could say, from a previous episode when the world was exploding and the the roach was talking talking to the rat. Yeah, the roach, the, the roach was. I must not have. No, it's not the roach. But it was a grasshopper. Looked like it was like Mr. Nobody was like. It's not, it's not like Mr. Nobody it was just talking through the ro- through the cricket to the rat, and he's like, "Come, all these will end, and we'll I'll be here." And then the rat's all squeaky, and he's like, "Oh, you'll be here too." You remember that? Yeah, that's one of those scenes that, that okay, I, so I that, do remember happening now that you brought it up, but yeah. it's not something that I put into my memory. <laughs> but that, that's that's what that's what <laughs> that's, that's where all, that's where else you saw that rat yeah. or mouth. I think it's a rat. I think it's a rat. Admiral but, Whiskers. Admiral Whiskers. Yeah. Actually, that's pretty. And then like the, again, every time every time you throw in Alan Tudyk throwing um, exposition or you know being a narrator, like that's awesome. I, I really like I really like that part of the show when he does that because he plays it so well. Again, I'll always notate that that. Adam Tudyk is plays an awesome X, Y, and Z. It doesn't matter, villain, hero, whatever. But he is like, especially his his delivery as Mister Nobody, as a narrator, just so fun. Every time I hear him, it's just, I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, up until it got to that point, I was like really feeling that episode. Up until the point where the rat crawled out of his arm, I was like, what? <laughs> oh, that's why he malfunctioned. Oh, okay. Yeah, and everything just went downhill from there to me. I was like, really, 
I, I was like, I was feeling this episode. Like, it, it did really well on every character, every individual mindset. Even we got to see it, a, a perspective of Crazy Jane from Crazy Jane. Like, she's at war with herself, it seems like, at least in this one uh, situation. Because mm-hmm. we always just see she's different personalities, but then you saw her herself by herself talking to herself. But like almost arguing with herself, like no, we're not doing this, and then like yes, we are. No, we're not. Yes, we like. like it's kind of like, like okay, I didn't realize that struggle even existed. Like it just seemed mm-hmm. like she was just switching like a knob. But no, she does have some dominant personalities. Yeah, or or like control or some like a uh, conversation. Like they're all there present in some sort. So we got to see that. Uh, we also got to see. Um, I also wanted to point out that I at first I I, I thought it was going to go really dark with her father. Because she's crying the, as a baby, oh, her crying yeah. in the crib, and her father walks in all like slow and creepy, like I'm like, oh man, this isn't gonna go that dark, is it? Like that, that'd be really like fucked up. Like that's like abuse as a child causes these personalities to manifest. Even though we saw her getting that shot uh, last episode, um, so I was, I was, I was unhappy, but it was, it was okay. Well, it was neglect from her father. You know, just look at her, looks at her crying, just ignores her. Uh, that was. <laughs> And then we got to see uh, a, a lighthearted note. We got to see uh, Cyborg, a.k.a. Vic Stone, on a oh. Tinder, basically, or whatever they want to call it. But it was basically Tinder yeah. or a Tinder-esque uh, dating app. And he was talking to girls. <laughs> he's trying to hook up with girls. Like, I don't know what he was trying to do. Trying to, you're trying to meet. In goal. But like, well, yeah, because the profile someone. was created for him. Yeah. So you find out, he's like, what the hell is his profile? And then, like, he's almost accidentally stalking girls <laughs> and he sends a picture to one girl and like she he like sees her face like disgusting and he's like okay delete my profile i kind of like that i thought it should have went somewhere more like they should have left that avenue open at least like he can go out on a date or something or just hang out with people but well, they close it off completely when he did this pro i mean he can always reactivate his profile obviously yeah but everyone's gonna see him just everyone sees him as just cyborg yeah you know that's it so and 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 his security system tapped onto the bus because it thought it, it read in his mind, the subconscious that he wanted to see. So he said, Oh, I, you know, I, I felt that this is what she needed. So it tapped in the middle in the bus. So, but also give it an example of what he is capable of. You know, he has this human existence. There's this computer part where it uses his subconscious to act. So we can almost assume going forward, this is going to be like a thing. Like, oh, it seemed like all that was, he said, limiters were put on his abilities before that moment so now we yeah. see that cyborg is more evolved than we were led on to believe and now that he has full control of his own self and like his dad is completely cut off he closed the loop and now he just runs in the thing one his dad's not gonna be there to save him one his dad's not gonna be able to, to help him and two he's now we're gonna see what cyborg can actually do yeah so that made that interesting besides the arm cannon that we all saw <laughs> that he blew up by accident yeah so it, it kind of cut his dad out as a character. Also, it, it kind of led to his um, this thing that we kind of knew before that Cyborg might have killed his dad or her, his mom. Sorry, yeah. But then it also implied that maybe he didn't actually kill his mom, and maybe there was something more to it or that Mister Nobody got into his psyche and said it was actually his dad that killed his mom, or something else maybe happened. So it might have been he killed his mom, and his dad wrote rewrote the memories, or the memories he has is fake, and some situation where. Mom's dead, dad and kid are alive, and it may have something to do with a cover up, cover up, or to either keep him from something because he did it, or keep him something his mom was crazy. Who knows? You just add like a little bit of mystery there, so that was good. Um, we got to see, um, Mr. Uh, Negative Man, my apologies. <laughs> you see, when he going was, down that route, right? yeah, <laughs> Negative Man, where he was, uh, so we find out that. He's been showing these tendencies of these homosexual, homosexual te- tendencies since he was very young. And his father and mother, or his, his mother wants to address it. Father wants to say, no, he's, he's not that way. Um, very way back when type of thinking. And kind of like, my, my son's a man. He's not going to do that stuff. It was never addressed. So you can see like him as a child, kind of, I need to keep this secret. You know, but everyone knows. He even mentioned um, to his friend, his 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 lover, that you know you hear whispers of you know homosexual slurs and so forth in the locker room when they're there. So everyone knows, but just he hasn't really come out yet. So we we, we pretty much that we can we can assume that what we assume in the past that even his wife knows that there is a that there this is this is a 
So that that was that, and it, that was a struggle. Um, we did see now his his essence leaving his body towards the end. Was that more of to protect him, or is it he was tired of him having those thoughts because he was because the essence put him in that in that in that world because he was like tapping the walls. Like, I'm, I know I'm is a dream. Like, what do you want? And it's almost like he was he was trying to remember to the, the the exact. Did you get that, or what am I, am I missing here? No, I, I mean, I I, I was. Because it happened like seven times, I uh-huh. I don't actually honestly get what was, I don't what get the what the takeaway was? was supposed to be. Because I got that he was trying to either help him remember or help him. You think it was a repressed memory? Hey, with it. Yeah, I couldn't tell because it ended with the sunset or sunrise. I just watched the yeah. sunrise. Or you want to watch the sunrise? I, I just because the first the truck with the truck was wrong. Then there was a a, tra- a train there that they always went by, and then they said you know yeah the sunset. Yeah, I, I just. I tried. <laughs> I maybe maybe it was just more of like you need to accept who you are. So that's maybe an issue. I'm not sure if he's fully accepted who he is as a person who has, you know, sexually or just, you know, a negative man. I mean, I was definitely Rita's take on it. Like she is who she is and she has done what she's done and move on. At least that's what I got from it. Mm-hmm. Um, especially Cliff you pointed it out literally like you just thought your legs back into form. Um, and that Rita farm. So we got this little bit that Rita is not a real person. And we also got that this little girl Rita was a blonde. So, and then we also had that little bit that there's a suicide thought of, uh, re- there some, there's some mystery about this girl who slit her wrist, who was blonde. That's not, you think, you think anything is Rita, is it? Like a young so Rita? Fig- I don't know. I don't know. So her name, her name, her name wasn't Rita. It's her Rita was her stage name. And you know what? Fuck those parents. You know I can't stand that <laughs> shit. When the when I see parents like the beauty, I'm seeing I'm sorry to go off on a tangent here. You know those beauty pageant kids. This show was like really spiritual. The beauty <laughs> the beauty pageant kids whose parents they push onto that and like I couldn't be a success when I was young. And now I'm all overweight and fucked up. So I'm gonna push you to do this because I'm gonna live Why through. I'm gonna be live through fucked you because they're always overweight and fucked up. <laughs> And I'm gonna I'm gonna live through you, so you better stay skinny, and not get all fucking me, and you better win things, or else I'm gonna disown you. So t- sounds like Taylor needs some patrol there. <laughs> there be patrol. patrol. Yeah. But I'm gonna say though, but that that's how it was when her mother like, well, yeah, she won she won a she won a, uh, a pageant, and then she's like, oh, I'm this is so and so. No, no, use your stage name, and you can tell you can tell like she. And and the actress that you know they met didn't really give two shits about them, about who they are. They are she's wanted to be an actress. She has that. You know, no matter what what year it is, the high and mighty are always the high and mighty. <laughs> so fuck them too. Anyway, go ahead, Dre. You were saying? Oh, uh, and then like I thought it was clever uh, the way they took the <laughs> <laughs> the the. So I uh, so one two things I did miss. Um, one of them was the the Mister Negative, Negative Man, and Spirit. I missed mm-hmm. that thing, but I did get that the spirit might might either. So they, I'm accepting that they actually might de- do different thought process or Entities. two people. Yeah, and then um, the spirit wants to be a hero, so like, okay, go ahead and be a hero. He let him do that, which he just stood there the whole time. Mm-hmm. But then um, the other thing I missed was when Crazy Jane brought in the uh, the painting, which showed Cyborg and everyone dead. And she's like, and "Oh, was, Mister, was nobody it, showed me this." And I was like, well, "I don't get what I'm supposed it was to get." Chief from that. was holding her right. Was it Chief? I thought it was Cyborg. Was Cyborg? He said Cyborg was dead. Somebody was holding her. I thought it was Chief was holding her. When I rem- so it might be. Damn. When I looked at that photo, to me it looked like Cyborg. Cause no, cause I thought it was Cyborg. Cause Cyborg had just finished talking. Yeah. And then she's like, "Oh, this is what." And nobody. nobody showed me. And then she disappeared, came back, and she had a painting. Where everyone looked dead and looked like Cyborg was the only one that wasn't dead, and might, that might have not, I might have misinterpreted that. Oh but, no, worries. That I may again, that's also made me as well. Yeah, because like, know. but it was it was exactly the moment after Cyborg had just stopped talking. Mm-hmm. So I thought that that's because Cyborg had just told that story. Like I think I may have killed my mom, or I might have killed my mom. Yeah. And then she's like, "Oh, this is what Mister Nobody showed me." So I assumed that it was Cyborg in the center of holding someone's the, corpse, almost like badly damaged or bruised or dead body. And a bunch of dead people around him. Again, that was kind of like, I get that there's some meaning there. Do you want to speculate? Shall we? So based on, if, if Dre, you're correct, and that cyborg holding a body, <laughs> and there's dead bodies ever, all around. Dead bodies that, everywhere. That is why the inhibitors were put on him initially. Mm. So he got this. He got this. It 
actually he didn't blow up his mom when he got his you know his accident in general his mom was still alive he lost control of his power blew up killing people in the lab or whatever it was his mom got killed at the time his dad then in rewrote his memory and then put inhibitors into his I was going to say yes but I'm thinking even a step further the oh shit you know the father box kind of thing yes are we, box, are we bringing box? the mother, mother <laughs> father box Saint, yeah uh, Justice that, the, even, even if it's not that like some like a rogue program or a hack program or like a emission nobody or like a Mr. Nobody or even like a um, adolescent like you know teenage angst kind of thing just yeah. rage and then you know maybe something like that and like this because it's like this new super program but you know it's just still kind of messing with adolescent yeah, beta, mind. beta testing on the a teenager yeah so now he just wiles out and goes crazy i mean that's another possibility um but then then we skip over that and we go to go cliff cliff had the most interesting story where it's like he's just i mean we last saw him he's just in awe of his loss of his daughter so to speak so he's um grieving over that and then so i it was interesting the way they did it out like it made it almost like he finally just ticked snapped and he drove to his so friend's house to go kill him basically yeah so based on that as as he drove off he ran over a rat and that rat was the mother of <laughs> animal whiskers which that you see the, which so... you see that which you see so that that's how that kind of fit in there that but go ahead. He no, he didn't run on the rat that day. That was he ran on the rat six days before when he went to. Um, yeah, my apologies. Yeah, he went. Where did they go that time? I forget where they went. They went somewhere, and that's when he ran over the rat. Mm-hmm. And that's why it was six days. So there was a little. The rat yeah. was like a kid then, and yeah. then six days later, I guess rats grow super fast. <laughs> he, he took his revenge, but um. Yeah. So you 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 were saying he went to his friend's house. It looked like he went to his friend's yeah, house. Yeah, it looked like he went to his friend's house to go kill him. And basically, his friend pulled out a shotgun and, and shot him like a super mega <laughs> blaster yeah. type plasma shotgun. And like, what the fuck? And he's like, oh, he's snapped and he's seeing things. He thinks he's at his buddy's house trying to beat him up, but really, he's at the hotel. He hasn't left. Yeah. And then they're trying to, uh, they're trying to uh, basically stop him. And then he, his mind just like glitches out. And he basically, if at some point, gets taken down by a cyborg. cyborg. And then we got the rat. I'm like, what? <laughs> that was his revenge. Yeah. That, that's what cute. Like, to, to me, the, the, this level he hit well on so many notes. Like, we got to... I mean, granted, again, we haven't ticked forward that that progressive progress in the story. The, the like, fine cheap step. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, will, will we? Maybe, in maybe. terms of, like, know. check marks of, like, okay, steps to finding cheap. We haven't actually progressed at all whatsoever. But I thought that episode was really done because we got the d- dive deep into each character and and almost show that these characters, I mean, they basically said it out loud, so I can't remember what the phrase is. Like, we're all fucked, so let's yeah. talk together about how we're fucked before we get all get fucked or something like that. Uh, but how much, I'm cool with, with character progression, with character development, but how much character development are they going to do until they actually move step with a story <laughs> progression? <laughs> character development and progression is cool. Story, story progression is a lot better. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's you know, my main. Moving this little dial a bit forward. No, we have literally we're in the exact same place. Yeah. Uh, we are in terms of like story progression, but no knowledge we, wise, we got a little more. Yeah, of the and we, we do we do see that Jane is is sad and wonders why the chief wanted to send her away and you know lock her up. Yeah, I mean we all <laughs> by the end of the episodes we got that they really just want to find chief to explain a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and that's where we. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that that's uh therapy time that, that, that is that episode i actually let's say that again i actually enjoyed this episode it, it it did really well and and even though it didn't progress at all i thought it was really well done how it like kind of one i thought the cliff reveal that he was just kind of wigging out because he's you know his brain stressed yeah we well, saw him also good. he's like i want to eat a cookie i want to know what the cookie tastes like yeah like you just see like he's i mean he's been in that robot body for so long but now he's like pissed off about it or like sad about it and his, especially when he finds out that part of his life still exists, <laughs> like his his offspring, yeah. And like, oh, and um, his he his father was just abusive as to his wife as he was to his family. So he even like said like the, the circle continues yeah. and like the abuse. So he, like he's trying to break out of it in his in his non clinical therapeutic way. Mm-hmm. So that was good. 
Um, we got to see a little bit of Jane in her inner battle. We got to see Cyborg where he's at, like in a world where he's been his youth is. I mean, his, his life's been taken away from him by this whatever happened to him, and now he's kind of forced in this world. And we got to see uh, Rita's past and how it affected her to where she's at now. And I feel like there's somebody. Oh, Mister Negative and how Negative Man, Negative Man, <laughs> and how where he's at, like and accepted. So it was really done well. Up until the fucking rat. Why? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay I with the rat. Can't imagine that in the I, I writers' think... room they wrote this great story. You know what? Because that's gonna be that's gonna be the one thing that re- leads us on to the next story. Like that's gonna be like the one connection. Oh yeah, the rat. And then we're gonna follow the rat. The rat's gonna go back to the grasshopper. The Mister Nobody's gonna be there, and then uh, it's gonna happen. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But we're recording this that you know came out a couple days ago. But that's what I think. The rat's gonna be the connection to the next episode. And then going forward from there, nothing, nothing else. So nothing, the next episode is gonna be called Rat Patrol. Is that is that what you're hinting? I don't, who knows? <laughs> who knows? We're pretty good at guessing things, but no, they, there's no other thing that has happened unless you bring like Animal Vegetable Mineral Man and like he appears at nowhere or John Constantine. Um, you, know, <laughs> you can't remember his name either. <laughs> yeah, it's not a P, but you know, non Constantine Constantine comes back <laughs> and and says, you know, hey, guess what? Here's some more hooky shit. So. I don't know. I I'm not sure. We last time we spoiled it. We went, we saw the next episode title before we watched the episode. We did not do it this time, so we're not sure what the next episode's called. It's episode eight. Uh, how many? Do you know how many episodes were in t- Titans? No, t- no. Titans before we went on oh, bra- and break. Titans. It was uh, six. I thought we went to break before that because they only had like a total of thirteen, from what I recall. Oh, I do recall it being like not that many number of episodes like, before we went to break, but progress of the story we had gone somewhere <laughs> some shit had happened <laughs> yeah they had already gotten together at this point and they're going somewhere so, so we're not sure how many episodes are left in before the doom Patrol half season question mark you know is then, it's gonna happen because it's a uh showtime-esque show it's it's gonna be like probably 13 to 16 episodes total probably closer to 13 that's probably like the magic number eight mm-hmm. most shows when they're on like Showtime and they're running forty five minutes, they go in the eight to ten episodes. thirteen episodes. Well, Netflix has ten episodes for some shows that are half an hour long. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, yeah. it's it's generally like either eight because Defenders had eight, um, but I've seen up most of thirteen. I'm I'm pretty sure there's exceptions to rule, but that seems to be the good number to base it on. And we're already at seven, and we've gone nowhere. <laughs> no, we haven't even got any. We don't even know where. <laughs> All you know is, is Niles has been taken, and then we've just kind of delved into all this missing links and personal history. So yeah. it seems like this show, to me, was just not well thought out in terms of what are we going to do with these? Wait, we've got this cash. Now let's do something with them. And just kind of like, okay, just keep stalling until we figure out a storyline. Are they treating it like a actual comic book where there's a lot of exposition and a lot of backstory and stuff? I, I, I don't know. I I tell we're you. not we're not writers. We aren't writers for shows or anything, Chovener. So we don't know. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so next episode, episode eight. Not sure what's called. Therapy. Uh, this was therapy. Ep- therapy episode. This was therapy. Good episode. Like I loved yeah. it. As actually one of the better ones. If I if I rank this, it would be at least top three. And on that note, we thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you. See you later. DC time. We out. Peace. Peace. I don't say peace. You say peace. We say peace. <laughs>